Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for Season 5 of Dexter. Now, if you have been following the channel, you will notice I have been reviewing all the seasons of Dexter. I've just finished Season 5 last night, um, and in many people's eyes, and I'm not really going to argue with it, I think they're probably right, Season 4 is considered to be the top of the mountain in regards to the Dexter seasons. Many people cite it as their favourite, um, I kind of agree really and I think it's mainly due to the strength of the villain uh, the Trinity Killer uh, and the impact that the Trinity Killer had on Dexter's life i.e. in the death of Rita now so season 5 was always I think going to struggle to follow up season 4 um, the dynamics now have changed Dexter's a single parent um, the start of season 5, um, the first episode, is just dealing really with the after effects of Rita's death. Dexter doesn't have the emotional tools to deal with that, even though he's feeling the impact of it. He's got Astor and Cody to tell that their mother's dead, which they don't take very... Uh, obviously they don't react well to that. Um, he's considered a suspect now with the FBI. Quinn has got his suspicions, there's all these stuff going on in his life and he just can't cope. So I thought the first episode essentially did a brilliant job of dealing with the after effects of Rita's death. Um, and it was almost like season 5 began on episode 2. When he could put it to bed what happened with Rita and move on with his life to some degree. And episode 2, I mean um, from episode 2 onwards really, the season focused on... Um, a series of killings uh, of young women uh, and stuffed in barrels basically these women are, are tortured raped abused uh, by a group of men um, who Dexter Dexter discovers this but he thinks it initially it's one person uh, this animal collector it's a guy goes around collecting dead animals by I think I think he's called he takes him out but he, what he discovers then is that he's been witnessed by Julia Stiles' character who has been locked away, abused, raped, all this kind of stuff just like the other girls, she was due to be killed next and he discovers through her um, that there was not just Boyd that was doing it it was a series of men and um, she asks for Dexter's help to try and um, deal with these men and to, so she can move on with her life he initially resists this of course he does doesn't want a partner to help and all that kind of stuff all sorts of dynamics going on and then, but ultimately they do pair up um, and end up taking out these people one at a time which is cathartic for Dexter because he's got a lot of guilt with what happened to Rita and he sees this as an opportunity to help Lumen, played by Julia Stiles, brilliantly played by Julia Stiles, um, to get some peace in her life and move on. And he thinks he might even have found someone he could share his life with who can live with his secret. So there's all that going on as well uh, there. Um, I think the, one of the big problems with this season is the lack of a really good antagonist. Now, Johnny Lee Miller plays Jordan Chase, who ends up ultimately being the, the antagonist of the show. Um, and he's just he's a hard act to follow the Trinity Killer and I don't think he's in it enough this season and I don't think he's as menacing in some ways as uh, some of the previous villains in the show uh, it doesn't do a bad job a bad job don't get me wrong John Lee Miller it just I think it was um, a fairly weak villain this time um, propped up by Julia Stiles, who, like I mentioned, I think gives an absolutely fantastic performance, a brilliant performance. Um, and the chemistry between her and Michael C. Hall is tangible throughout the season, and they do they work really, really well together. There's other things going on in this season as well, of course there is. Batista and LaGuerta's marriage ends up going on the rocks in this season. There's a little bit of struggle in their marriage for a number of reasons. Um, that That's okay. Um, I, I felt as though they didn't give Batista an awful lot to do this season uh, which was a shame as one of my favourite characters Quinn really stepped into the front this season uh, um, I thought Quinn had a really really good season he has his suspicions about Dexter he thinks he's connected to the Trinity Killer he's obsessed with it he ends up getting suspended over it from La Guerta. he falls in love with Deb they have a relationship um, he hires Peter Weller also known as Robocop to 
uh, follow Dexter about and gather evidence on him. So he has, he has a really prominent season this season, Quinn, which um, was very good. He needed that, I think. Um, what else happened this season? Well, there was also like these killings in the community, the Latino community, from these gangsters executing people that potentially would um, who's witnessed them doing things and all this kind of stuff and the early part of the season is Deb following up on that and chasing them down and is paired with a rookie um, from the Latino community, a rookie cop, uh, a beat cop and ultimately Deb ends up being betrayed by this rookie cop and La Guerta when the bust goes wrong um, there's it, it did feel to me like by the end of this season there was a number of storylines that weren't closed effectively for me I don't think they resolved Quinn's storyline effectively and essentially he is linked at the end of the season to the death of Robocop Peter Willow um, and just because Dexter kind of did him a favour with the blood work he's kind of exonerated even though he could easily have been linked heavily if they'd invest investigated it further to uh, Peter Weller's character so that felt a little bit sloppy how they handled that the storyline with Debs and this rookie detective felt like it wasn't resolved enough like she was quite prominent this rookie detective in the early parts of the season and then the second half of the season you barely saw at all and I think they could have done more with that character in the second half of the season and the relationship between Batista and La Guerta um, I felt it was just one dimensional this season you know Marriage on the Rocks not much else really to it and both of these characters I thought were not particularly well written this season um, but other than that I thought the dynamic between Lumin and Dexter was really, really good. Um, how they played that out, it was a great idea what they did with this character and with Dexter and ultimately the heartbreak that he feels at the end of the season. Um, so I, d I do think in some ways it is a strong season and in other, in other ways it was really going to struggle to to follow season four. And I do think um, they made some poor writing decisions here in season five. But some of it really, really worked. Um, I, I just, I would have preferred um, a stronger antagonist, um, and certainly gave him something more to do than they did in this season. But um, it's not a bad season. There are some great moments in it, some great episodes, especially the first episode, and there are a number of more as well that are, are really nicely done. So I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. Um, and now we move on to season six and from memory I do remember quite enjoying season six so let's see how that one plays out so thanks for watching everybody